welcome to the Weekly Mac. On today's show, we'll be talking to one of the most prolific and international Catalan film actors, Alex Vrendemul. And we'll be looking at Catalan international connections with Matthew Tree, idioms with Mario Serra, and lockdown recipes with Humberto Gonzalez. And we'll visit the Museum of Modern Art in New York, and we'll show you how some Hollywood stars have leapt into action. This is the home edition of the Weekly Mag, your TV show in English, hosted by Marcella Topor. Hello there. Let's kick off today's English practice by having some fun and also learning a couple of things, like one of Matthew Tree's forays into history so as to find international Catalan connections. Hello, Matthew. Hi, Marcella. Everything okay? Yeah, everything is fine. Well, today you're going to tell us about one of the most successful writers of uh, Catalan literature, Matthew. So uh, tell us, who uh, was she? Well, no surprises here. Uh, one of the greatest, perhaps the greatest novelist in, in Catalan language literature, Mercé Rodoreda, uh, 20th century literature, at least in, Catal in the Catalan language. And uh, uh, a lot of people watching this program know exactly who Messe Rodoreda is, or they've read some of the uh, books she wrote. But what a lot of people don't know is that she was translated a great deal into English and had a tremendous, has had, is having, in fact, a huge impact in the English language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, pretty amazing indeed. So let's see, Matthew, how many of her books have actually been translated uh, into English? What, 17? 17 wow. in total, which is not bad for a Catalan language writer. Um, for example, uh, just to give an idea, one of the most prestigious, best known, most famous publishers in uh, the United Kingdom, Diana Athill, who died last year at the age of 101, in her memoir, she wrote that of all, one of the books that she published, that she liked the most, She published it back in 1967. It had the title The Pigeon Girl. It was, in fact, La Plaza del Diamant. This is a novel that didn't function, but 30, uh, as in terms of sales. But 33 years later, I would still recommend it to any reader. Please read this book. It's one of the most astonishing books that I've ever read. And of that book, La Plaza del Diamant, in fact, in English, there are two more translations, an American one by David Rosenthal and an English one by Peter Bush uh, called In Diamond Square, which came out very recently, in fact. Well, Matthew, La Plaza del Diamant is certainly Rodoreda's best-known uh, novel, but what about her other books? About eight other titles have been translated, but the one which has had the most impact recently is Death in Spring, published 2018. Uh, it got rave reviews in the Anglo-American press, but above all, what I liked is a comment by the uh, Lebanese uh, author, whose name I always have to check, Hanan al Shaikh in the New York Times. She said that Death in Spring was a novel that she had read recently and that she was, and I quote literally, she said, hypnotized, bewitched by the beauty of the prose. Right, Matthew. Uh, let's see, has her work ever been dramatized or filmed in English? In English, no. But uh, what they did in 2009 in New York, they organized a thing called Catalan Days, where a lot of important American uh, actors and uh, musicians came along. I think Lou Reed took part, among others. And uh, Jessica Lange read a, on stage a section of La Plaza del Diamant or In Diamond Square. And she got so moved as she was reading it that she actually started crying uh, on stage without that being planned. You know, she felt so emotional about what she was reading. So that gives an idea of the impact that Messe Rodoreda can have in English or is still having in English. I mean, it was an, uh, an amazing moment. Right. Well, La Plaza del Diamant, a wonderful book which we strongly recommend to those who still haven't read it. Well, uh, Matthew, thank you so much. Interesting It's as always. A pleasure. And as the lockdown eases, our reporter Umberto Gonzalez continues to look at its weirdest effects on his friends around the world and on himself. Now he's decided to investigate how it has affected our cooking habits. Let's check it out. 
I don't know about y'all, but I am done cooking the same thing day after day throughout this quarantine, y'all. I am going to call people and ask them about their experiences cooking. And I may even call my own mama. I eat a lot of fish, lots of vegetables. Have you cheated? Oh, of course, all the time. You should see the things that I've ordered. It's ridiculous. Huge waffle, lots of pizza, Chinese food, Thai food, Indian food. Basically, protein and nutrients. We have here in Belgium a lot of friture. 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 Please, give me something new. This is the ingredient of tomato sauce, onion, garlic, and parsley. Cooking wine and olive oil. The roasted pepper and the sweet pea. Now I put all the ingredients with the shrimps. Over the rice. Look how nice it is at this. That's what my mom said. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have added the wine. One of my friends, she's a really bad cook. The only thing that she can make, penne a la vodka. I love beef. <laughs> you like raw meat? Raw meat. <laughs> Conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, cooking can be fun and delicious in more ways than one. But the mess after this, I need to have me a cleaning episode now. So today's guest is one of the most prolific Catalan film actors. With a career spanning over 25 years, he's appeared in more than 100 cinema and TV productions, including many international projects in different languages, such as German, French and English. His name is Alex Brendamil. Welcome, Alex. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Well, Alex, you usually work on several different productions every year. That's tons of work. So tell us, how have you adapted to the lockdown over the last few weeks? And tell us if you are rehearsing, if you are preparing for a role or just working in any way at all. Well, first of all, it, some, it looks like if I was permanently working and, and not doing anything but working, um, it's not really like this because uh, it looks more than it is actually because, uh, well, I think it's like three, four productions a year, which I do. I've been working for over 25 years, so uh, it hasn't really been that much. But um, I must say that I, I have been slowing down a little bit in the last uh, year because I was kind of fed up of traveling around the whole time and. Uh, being abroad from home and from the kids, from the family. So I needed a little bit of, of um, a slowdown and... Uh, a break. A break and this was um, somehow a, an opportunity to, to allow myself to, to slow down, to, to make a little break. Hopefully, hopefully we, you can do it all. Well, in fact, Alex, you were doing to present two films this year as well. Uh, Lofrena, directed by Ventura Dural, right? And later on, Aquelarre by uh, Pablo Aguero. Uh, tell us, what are they about? Lofrena is a review of, um, of the, the myth of Ulysses, of the Odyssey. So um, it's a modern uh, version of, of the Odyssey, of a... Uh, uh, this modern Ulysses who comes back to to try to conquer again his um, his first love. Okay. And um, and it's um, it's a tragedy, a, a very a, a, a triangular relationship between this man, his his uh, fiancée, and uh, this uh, ancient love, this woman. Who he, he's still in love with, and um, and then this it's this relationship between between these three characters. That's and Akelare, what about Akelare? 
Aquelarre is, is um, a very interesting movie from an Argentinian director, um, Pablo Agüero. Uh, and we shot it in the Basque country. It's about a judge who um, wrote this book about uh, witches and um, the persecution of, of witches in the 17th century, in the Inquisition. Interesting topic. Okay, your mother's Catalan, your father's German, so you're a native speaker of um, uh, the both, both languages, as well as Spanish, and you've also played parts in English and in French. In which language do you prefer to act? Well, I, I must say I prefer switching from one language to the other because it's a, it's a funny game for me, uh, changing languages. And, and I discover myself in a different um, way of expression, which is myself, but somehow different. And so it's, it's always very challenging to, to play in, in a different language and to be um, changing from one culture to, an, to, to the other and trying okay. to and trying to to adapt to to a, to a character sometimes a living character where you have to you have to try to to understand the the deep thought of of the character the deep mm -hmm. identity of the character and i think this makes part of of myself of my not belonging anywhere and uh, and trying to to conquer the world somehow in in the sense of of trying to understand to, uh, different cultures, mm -hmm. trying to That's understand good. different ways of thinking, different uh, identities, and I think this makes part of of my idol idiosyncrasies. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. That, and uh, Alex, in which countries do you work more often? Uh, lately, I've been working a lot in Germany and France. In Germany, because in there, I don't have really an accent in, in German, so I, I've been playing in, in a lot of productions in, in Germany and um, and it's okay. just, it's good fun because I, I'm, I haven't lived a lot in, in Germany, so I, I haven't grown up there, so, but somehow it belongs to, to me too and um, and I, I can adapt quickly to, to the way okay. of thinking. Mm -hmm. and, for, and in France, because like 10 years ago they started offering me a work there and it's it's such a great industry the fr the french film industry there's so oh, many right. good scripts so many good movies i i get offered that that it's always challenging to to work with good actors good directors good script writers mm -hmm. alex uh, we mainly see you playing uh, serious characters serious guys tell us do you have any favorite genres any um roles that you enjoy playing uh, most than others yeah, I think it's some kind of a burden I have uh, <laughs> <laughs> that I have to play serious and uh, tormented characters. But um, I mean, th there is something about I I'm really interested in, in, in diving inside the, 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 the psychology of, of extreme characters, which is always challenging. But I love comedy somehow. I love comedy. I love uh, I love dramedy, I, do, I love uh, action movies, and uh, I also like changing from from theater to, to cinema to, to television, uh, which okay, lately... There is a bit of variety. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. the thing, yeah. Alex, what about the phrase, less is more? I know that's uh, important for you, you said it recently. Uh, do you really prefer uh, subdued acting rather than overacting? Yes, I, I've always have a tendency to 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 look for for the less, uh, to look for the minimal expression, to try to to try to um, to, to 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 show the small part of the of the iceberg and and to have a a deep a deep part underneath to um, to let the also the the audience try to figure out what's going on, what's going on in the head of this character, in the head, what's going on in this, inside the scene, what's going on inside the movie. Alex, so what other projects you have in the pipeline? Uh, I mean, next, you mentioned a couple of films, you're waiting to, to, to be premiered, what's next? Well, uh, everything is in the air, I don't, <laughs> I don't really know what's going to, <laughs> what's going to happen. 
but um, I think the first thing that will I, I heard I read yesterday that um, the Barcelona Film Festival is going to to be in uh, June, so I have a, an interesting uh, Austrian movie uh, in that festival called uh, The Diver Inside from um, an Austrian director uh, called Günther Schweiger. And um, uh, hopefully this is gonna, gonna be premiered there uh, in order to, to have the Spanish audience in, okay. to, to see the movie. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I have to work for this uh, poetical evening I'm, I'm preparing about uh, the Spanish exile and, um, and I'm still choosing the, the text, the, the, the poetry, the, the songs and everything that's, that's going to be in that show. Okay, sounds good. Well, Alex, we all know that these are um, uh, really tough times for actors. So we hope to see you again soon on the big screen. And uh, well, thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. Thanks to you, it was a big pleasure for me. And we are staying with cinema because the first of today's recommendations is a review by Mika Lopez from Televisión de Badalona of a classic Billy Wilder comedy that you can watch on ebiblio.cat. Also, Juan Cama will be showing us a stunt challenge from Hollywood and Chela Falgueras is going to take us to New York's Museum of Modern Art. Check it out. You'll love this movie. This is The Apartment. It's a very good story about an insurance clerk who lets his apartment to other co-workers to have, uh, well, extramarital affairs. But then, one day, he falls in love with a girl who is having an extramarital affair with his boss. So, just imagine what happens. This is a very good movie, directed by Billy Wilder, that won Oscars for Best Movie, for Best Director, and for Best Screenplay, and should have won also for Best Actor and for Best Actress, because they were Jack Lemmon and Shirley MacLaine, and they were fabulous in their roles. So please watch The Apartment. You'll love it, I'll tell you. Let's go to Midtown Manhattan and visit the Museum of Modern Art, also known as MoMA. This museum was founded in 1929 and it houses an evolving collection of almost 200,000 works of art ranging from post-impressionist classics to modern American art design masterpieces or photography and film. Good news, more than 86,000 works are currently available online and for some of them you can even enhance your visit with audio file descriptions. Let's start with the virtual views of the sculpture garden. Conceived as an outdoor gallery for changing installations, it brings nature, architecture and art together in a new way. My selected highlights from the museum are Les Demoiselles d'Avignon by Pablo Picasso. Did you know that Avignon refers to a brothel on Carré Avignon in Barcelona? This painting was so revolutionary and controversial that led to widespread anger and disagreement even amongst the painter's closest associates and friends. The Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh dates from 1889 and it has been in the permanent collection of the museum since 1941. And to finish your visit, don't forget to explore one of the greatest American artists and his daily lunch for 20 years. Yes, I'm talking about Campbell Soup Cans by Andy Warhol. Enjoy! Being a Hollywood actor is not always as simple as it may seem. Sometimes you have to pretend you're crying and sometimes you have to pretend you're fighting against someone else. Wait a minute. <laughs> I can't play with my friends! Hollywood actresses came together to have some fun during quarantine. This video is titled Boss B Challenge and it's basically a badass Fight Club style fight.
Charlie's Angels, Drew Barrymore and Cameron Diaz take part in this video as well. So they do Catwoman, Hal Berry or Scarlett Johansson. You can even find Margot Robbie who brought out Harley Quinn's bat for this challenge. Before these women, a group of men had already published a very similar video. The Universe Cascade Campus is an educational center in France which is intended for motivated athletes whose objective is to become a professional stuntman. Since all of its students are currently confined, they have come up with this idea. Oh, and in case you're thinking about it, kids don't do this at home. Adults, neither do you. Social media never ceases to surprise us. And talking of surprises, do you know any other words we can use to describe how surprised we are? Please listen carefully to the following language tip from our collaborator and teacher, Mark Broderick. Hi. So, to express surprise, you say I'm surprised, right? But the more surprised you are, the more colorful and stronger adjectives you can use. For example, you're with your friends, right? You're telling them this story and you really want to grab their attention. So you say, I was astonished at the news. Or more informally, you could say, I was absolutely flabbergasted when I saw him walking down the street as a clown. In the UK, they also have the expression gobsmacked. I was gobsmacked. So whatever word you choose to express surprise, Leave your friends absolutely gobsmacked. Broadening our vocabulary with new words is something we can't recommend highly enough, and that includes idioms. So let's discover a few more of them with Mario Serra. Hello, Marius. Hi, Marcella. And yes, idioms are essential, what keeps a language alive. We could say an idiom a day keeps bad English away. And this week we've got not one, but three idioms sent in by our viewers. Let's hear them. My favorite idiom is no pain, no gain, which means that you need to put a bit of effort into things and that things don't happen just naturally, but that you need to work hard at them. I often tell this to my, to my sons a few times a day although it doesn't always work. My favorite idiom is a piece of cake, which means something is very easy. Like when my teacher says to write my name, I say it's like a piece of cake. My favorite idiom is see eye to eye. It means like for example, if I was playing basketball with my friend and and we didn't know who was going to go first, then we look eye to eye to each other and then we agree on it. So it means I'm going to agree on them. Well, many thanks to our adult viewers, but especially to our child viewers, whose English, by the way, is just great. But we still want some more examples. So do you have a favorite English set phrase? Then please send us a short horizontal video to twm at lasharsha.cat. Well, so Marius, which of these idioms has inspired you the most? Well, no pain, no gain is a very interesting idiom from two points of view. First of all, its meaning is centrally to Christian tradition because sacrifice, you know, is always needed to get something positive. Rome wasn't built in one day, we could say. In Catalan, we say, per lui, sada pati, which means you have to suffer a lot to be slim and beautiful. And the second interesting thing about no pain, no gain has to do with form. It is a rhyme based on paronomasia. Pain and gain are paronyms because they differ only in one letter, its initial. There are lots of idioms with paronyms. The one I've heard most is, you zip your lip. <laughs> 
That's a good one, Marius. Well, and perhaps one of the least uh, known of uh, all of them is to see eye to eye, right? Really? Uh, to see eye to eye, meaning to agree. There are lots of idioms about eyes, by the way, but the English and Catalan ones are quite different. If you get a black eye, for instance, I don't know, skating on ice, you bump and you, you get a, a, a black eye, you receive a bruise around your eye. In Catalan, we don't think about blackness, but about velvet. Tenir un ull de vellut. A second example, an eagle eye. Someone with an eagle eye has the ability to notice mistakes. In Catalan, we tend to talk about another animal, a lynx. But my favorite one is the apple of someone's eyes, meaning someone you love. In Catalan, we say la nina dels ulls. My question is, why an apple? Why not a doll? <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting uh, question, Marius, but I'm afraid the answer will have to wait because now it's time for the solution to our last uh, guess word, right? Yeah. The clue was, with my doll here, the most spiritual fish. Four letters. Did you solve it? Well, Marius, I confess I'm still at a loss. Actually, I thought of a monk from Monkfish, but that's an eight-letter word. Yeah, you were going quite in the right direction, but, but as you said, the answer can't be Monkfish altogether because it's a single word of eight letters and monk is not a fish. The right solution was soul. Probably the most popular flat fish in Catalan, llanguado. And of course, it's spiritual because it sounds exactly like soul, S-O-U-L, which is a synonym of spirit. Soul. Well, I see you're back to homophones, Marius. <laughs> so let's see, what about next week? Well, it's a long one, but long doesn't mean difficult. Here, you've got the clue. The fruit which you think about when you taste the delicious slice of melon. Ten letters. The fruit which you think about when you taste a delicious slice of melon. Ten letters. Ten letters. Marius, that's a long one indeed. Well, let's remind our viewers to please share this guest word and post their answers on our social media profiles. And as always, the guest word brings today's episode to an end. Uh, Marius, thanks a lot. It's Bye -bye. been uh, highly interesting as always, and I'll see you next week. See you. Tune in to the Weekly Mag next week. In the meantime, please keep up your English with all the videos on our website. And have a great week. Bye-bye and take care.